Hey, Steve here. Okay, so let's talk about exposing to the right in your landscape photography. Now, it's an idea that I had heard about years ago and just generally accepted was a good idea without really ever testing to see for myself. So is everyone blowing it out of proportion when they tell you to do it? Or is it an overrated technique that only serves to complicate things for you? Now, coming up is a clip that I'm sharing straight out of my new Landscape Capture Masterclass, where I demonstrate with side-by-side -side examples the difference in image quality between variously exposed versions of the same scene. So we can see firsthand if it's actually worth doing. Now, at the time of recording this video, my Landscape Capture Masterclass is still in development, but you can sign up to the notification list and be first to know when it's released. Just click the link in the video description below. And if you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, remember to hit the subscribe button in the bottom corner now to stay informed whenever I release a new video here on YouTube. So at this point, I'll head over to the demonstration. Just a reminder, this is a pre-recorded clip from my Landscape Capture Masterclass. All right, so we're in Lightroom and what we're looking at is an image which I've taken and all of the image data if you look at the histogram up here in the top right, uh, all the image data actually is nicely contained within the limits of the histogram. So there's no clipping in the shadows or in the highlights. Um, and when you look at how close the image data does come to those black and white points, uh, there's, you, know, you can sort of see that there's not really much room for uh, getting a better single exposure. Um, where something doesn't clip at one or the other end. Um, however, with that said, I did take two other exposures, one brighter and one darker. So this is the, uh, the brighter shot, which uh, captures the shadows and you can see all the detail in the shadows a lot nicer. Um, but as we can see, the highlights are clipped up there on the right hand side. And the opposite thing here for the shadows, um, to capture that detail in the highlights there. Uh, we've clipped the shadows, but the highlights are nicely uh, detailed. Now, what I'm actually gonna do here is just show you a comparison um, to show you the difference in image quality between these three exposures. If we were to uh, basically adjust the exposure value of the bright and the dark ones so that they're the same as this middle exposure here. And hopefully this is gonna demonstrate why it might be a good idea to expose to the right and then darken an image um, for the sake of the shadow image quality. So um, yeah, what I'm gonna do actually is, well, first of all, we just need to figure out how many stops apart these two, uh, these exposures are. I think it's somewhere around two stops. So I'm just gonna move the exposure slider on this bright exposure here down two stops. And I think actually that might not, just looking down here in the shadows of this cannon, I think it might be a little bit darker here. What about 1.7? I think that's more like it. Also looking at the histogram, yeah, I think that's pretty much about as you know, equal brightness. Uh, so let's add 1.75 stops to this one and see if that gets us in the right ballpark. Okay, actually that needs to go a bit brighter. Okay, I think we're there. So this is now we're looking at the dark exposure increased by two stops. This is the middle exposure and this is the bright exposure darkened by 1.75 stops. And the result is they're all now basically the same brightness. Um, so let me see actually, you know, might want to zoom in a bit closer than this. So I'm actually going to open each of these into Photoshop now uh, so that we can just compare them one by one. Um, zooming in more on that detail so we can see the difference in the quality of the shadow image data. So bear with me while I pop over to Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop with each of these layers now loaded into, or each of these images loaded into layers. 
Uh, let me just double check. So image 245 should be the dark one, 246, uh, 2546 the middle, and then 2547 is the bright exposure. Let's just double check that. So 45, 46, 47. Yep. Okay. So the reason I wanted to come into Photoshop is so we can zoom in a lot closer and we can actually see what's going on in the shadows here. Um, so as we can see, and as you would expect, there's quite a lot of image noise. Uh, you can even see a lot of color noise with like a lot of pinks and sort of greens um, appearing in what is supposed to be this kind of white uh, or off-white painted wood. Uh, and you would expect that from a shot that you've uh, taken where the shadows were dark and then you've increased the brightness in post-processing. Um, but let's now compare this to the same area on the middle exposure. So this is the exposure where we exposed correctly. So I haven't adjusted this up or down. And you can see there that the, uh, the noise has uh, disappeared pretty well. You know, it's, uh, it's a lot cleaner, this, uh, this middle exposure here. But now let's compare this now to the bright exposure, which has then been darkened. So here's the bright exposure darkened, and here's the, um, the middle exposure, the, the standard middle exposure. So depending on the video resolution that you're watching this on, it might be a bit tricky to see the difference. But if I zoom in really close, you can actually see the same kind of effect or the same kind of difference that was happening between the dark and the middle. We've got that same thing going on here between the middle and the bright. So here's the middle exposure. And when I toggle this off, you know, we should see all of this just become a lot cleaner. So here's the bright, here's middle, bright, middle, bright, and middle. So we can see there, you know, what this is telling us is that if you want the best image quality possible in the shadows, then it would definitely be worth considering overexposing, exposing your images to the right, even when you don't necessarily need to, and then darkening that bright exposure to that point where the shadows are at the correct brightness levels. And the result, you know, as I said, is a cleaner image. So click the icon on screen right now to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of my new videos when I publish them. And then click play to see the next video on how to blend bracketed exposures in Photoshop.